I feel like we need to have a different theme song for every piano bench. Every single yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> and I want to be surprised by it. I don't want to know what it is. But then, like, am I supposed to play it? Or are you going to play it? Or Wait, I guess you no, can't it, play it. No, it goes in the... Oh, like before. Like, on the, like when, the, when we're starting the show music. I almost feel like we need, like, a theme song. Almost <sighs> like a like a cartoon, like an old school cartoon, but just like the, you know, you hear it and you just know it's time for the bench. Can you write it? Can I write? I could probably come up with a jingle you're pretty, of sorts. You're pretty good at some stuff. At some some stuff. Oh, some stuff. <laughs> okay, so first of all, first things first, everyone. Welcome to the piano bench. Welcome. Second things next is there are a lot of you here. <laughs> Where did you all come from? <laughs> This is awesome. I know. Hello to our piano family and our YouTube friends. They can be Welcome. a family too. Yeah. We can all be friends or family. Yeah, exactly. Friends and family. I might be in a <laughs> bit of a weird mood today. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Yeah, you've been busy today, Lisa. Lisa, <sighs> Lisa and I share an office for those of you who don't know. <sighs> and today she has been in the office for approximately 90 seconds. Uh, like all day. I don't know what's going on. Because <laughs> she, she comes in and she's a tornado. She goes, I need this, I need this, I need this. And she's gone, gone again. And I'm like, bye, Lisa. Bye, nice meeting you. <laughs> I did a sing you boot camp this morning. Yeah. And then I did voiceovers for the Drumio Awards. Oh. So I got to be the announcer voice, which is like my the dream. The announcer. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I had a bunch of meetings. And then I'm just here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm loving it all. Okay. I'm going to like let a secret leak. <gasps> Okay. <laughs> uh, least, I don't know if it's to talk about again. Well, okay. it's too late now. Let's hear it. I just want everybody to know what I've been working on. I want to I, tell my oh, family, friends, okay. what's been stressing me out lately. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stress, though. Yeah, it's really good stress. It's for the greater good. So we're working on a product <laughs> for brand new piano players. And it's going to be like the best thing I think we've ever done. And... I want it to be so perfect. So it's going to be like teaching people who've never played the piano before how to play along to a song, how to chord. It's going to go over like a certain time period. I'm not really no, I'm allowed to talk about it. <laughs> so I'm kind of stressing out right now that I'm saying too much because it's not like I'm filming it tomorrow and I've spent every day just like agonizing over the outline. Is this too much? Is it not enough? Is this too complicated? Is it exciting enough? Is this the right speed? <laughs> and so I'm filming it tomorrow. Yeah, I, th I think the thing is, and, and for the product, when it does come out eventually, mm. we won't say what it's called, no. but <clears throat> no matter what level you're at, I think this is the same thing for this episode today, the four piano exercises for beginners. Mm -hmm. It's meant for beginners, but you can be at any yes. level and be practicing all these things that we're going to show you today as well. Yeah. Um, Lisa, when you're practicing at home and you, when you're coming up with these ideas, are you doing it on your acoustic piano or on your electric piano? In my mind piano. In your mind <laughs> piano, your air piano. <laughs> Option number three. <laughs> I always um, work on ideas on my acoustic piano. On the acoustic. <clears throat> Very nice. There's just something about the energy of the acoustic experience. Yeah, just, you can't, you can't hit no transpose button on an acoustic, so. No, you just have to, you just have to know. Well, did you know that there is actually <laughs> a brand new piano that just what? got announced by Yamaha last week? Yamaha! Yamaha is, they're trying <clears throat> to step up the piano game with this new it's I, I don't know if it's like the world's ever first smart keyboard but it is meant to be like a smart piano like How albert einstein level smart <laughs> so it's got it's got a bunch of things so i think we have some pictures here let's see if we can show some of these pictures of the piano so take a, it's kind of meant to be you know played with an ipad in mind it has an app that goes along with it as well uh let's look at, look at another photo here Oh, look at that. Like, it's got, like, the app that oh, you can like play along dots. with. I like the dots. I like the yeah, colorful so dots. Yeah, so those dots, that's called Streamlights, which is a new kind of Yamaha technology. And I think it's, like, the red notes are, like, naturals, and the blue notes are maybe sharps or maybe opposite, um, something like that. But you, it, it is a portable piano, so you can either come with that stand there with, okay. the, with the sustain pedals, or you can just kind of lift off the top, and it's, like, a portable piano as okay. well. Um, and it has a bunch of really cool features, like, I think... It has over like 600 instrument voices, which, you know, is not new for can Yamaha. Can you even name 600 instruments? I, I don't know that I can, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but it has this Yamaha Smart Pianist app where you can edit everything. And the, the biggest thing I think for this is the piano sound for this one is modeled after two really, really great grand pianos. So one is the Yamaha like CFX grand piano, and the other one is a Bosendorfer. Ooh. So if you're familiar with those two brands, they sampled each note to recreate it for this keyboard in particular. Um, and it even has like a microphone input where it gives you automatic vocal harmony, 
where you can just like plug it into the back and start singing through that. your mic in there. I've and then that. it'll, I don't know how it works. I haven't tested it out yet. Um, there's an audio to score function that converts audio songs into piano accompaniment. There's just so many things. And I was reading this and I was going, what, like, what is this keyboard? Like, we got to get our hands on one to try it out at some point. But there is a little uh, trailer demo, like just a sneak peek that they kind of made to show us. <gasps> the one thing I will say though, is the music is, I don't know, it just feels so retro, like from like the 90s. But anyways, let's take a look at this little trailer for the new Yamaha keyboard. The PS500 is your guide to a truly enjoyable and authentic musical journey. With decades of experience, research and development in digital piano technology, Yamaha has developed incredibly realistic piano voices that are virtually indistinguishable from an acoustic piano. Experience realistic touch and response, paired with the unmistakable tone of two of the finest concert grand pianos in the world. The flagship Yamaha CFX Concert Grand Piano and the world-renowned Bosendorfer Imperial Concert Grand Piano. Both are celebrated for their distinctive power, versatility, and refinement. And both can be found in digital pianos made only by Yamaha. The authentic touch of the keyboard recreates the characteristically gradual increase in weight of the keys. They're heavy in the low end and light in the high register to make you feel as if you're playing an acoustic grand piano. The PS500 features virtual resonance modeling to recreate the internal acoustics and reverberations of a grand piano, changing subtly with the timing and strength of the player's touch and pedal operation. Isn't that like neat? Like, you know what it reminds me of? Let's just take a moment here. My very first keyboard that I ever got was the yeah. Yamaha. So I had pianos, okay. Yeah. But like, I remember going to the music store with my dad, and we found this like Yamaha PSR or something. Yeah. And you know, you could it had all of the sounds, and you could layer the the sounds, and then it had a microphone that you could plug in, and the vocal effects, and you could put like a physical disc, a floppy disc. Oh yeah, like the floppy disc. Yeah. That's how old I am. This reminds <laughs> me of like the revival of that. It really, I think it is, and like, and but those lights that were coming down, it was almost like. Video game like, uh, uh, like we have Truman beside us here. Truman, Truman, say hello to the audience. Finally, get a camera Whoa. on Truman. We got a camera on Mr. Tuna. Thank Truman, heaven. He is running our mm. YouTube chat right now. He is Mr. Piano himself. Yeah. Truman, like, what do you think about um, this keyboard? This new keyboard. Like, what's really cool about it is the, is those lights and how like you would use it to learn songs. Like prior to this um, multi-light system that kind mm -hmm. of falls down like a like a rock band game, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, they you might have like a light up keys or like reading the notes. You would have had no like anticipation like leading up to what it's you were supposed to play. It really just gives you what you need to know as you need to know it when you're playing. It's really like it stresses me out a little, man. I feel song. stressed out, but I feel not in control enough. I, we got some comments like Ms. Riz, she's saying like, I don't care about gaming features in a piano though, I just wanna play the piano. And I totally get that. And I, I think this is more so for... Uh, I think it'll be fun. It, I like, think it's just like, like a fun feature. I think Truman's feature. right, it is cool. It is a cool feature. Like, would I personally use it a ton? No. Maybe at the beginning. Or uh, learn scales with it. <laughs> but learn scales, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When scales you're learning, cool. it could be a really cool like educational tool. I could see that being a benefit from this. I don't know, what are your thoughts on this keyboard, yeah, you, like I think thoughts. the I think the going price right now because it just released this month, uh, so you could go into your local piano shop and if they have it in, you um, could check it out. You could check it out. I think cool. it's going for around like uh, two thousand pounds or like twenty five hundred um, yeah US. I just so feel it, like it I'm is a. Uh, that's why I covered my face. <laughs> I thought you were gasping. No. <laughs> it's like it's it's a higher. Uh, price range, but for still like the entry level, key, like digital pianos high at least. But it's a high end entry level, which you guys did a whole video on all those, which is awesome. You and Truman. Truman. I know. I was a fun video to make. Yeah. yeah. It seemed like you guys had so many pianos around you. I was like, this is. Do you guys like talking about piano gear? I feel like drummers are always like, this drum thing, that drum <laughs> thing, guitar players, like same guitar thing. pedal, guitar pedal, guitar here, this, there. that. <laughs> like, are you guys interested in, in gear? Is that something that we should be trying to work into the show more, demonstrating pianos or whatever 
a few accessories they actually make for us piano players. <laughs> uh, if you want to know more about that, you should just tell us in the comments so that we know. Okay, people like this. Yeah, <clears throat> people saying it's pretty cool, pretty cool, love it. Yes, yeah. Lisa and Kevin. Yeah, and my silly little Yamaha PSR that I got, I remember I had to, abs my my allowance was like taken for the rest of, I remember thinking like, I need to have this. I will never take allowance again. I'll continue to do all the chores, <laughs> but you can have my allowance forever. It's over. It's and that's, over. That's what we did. That that was it for you. I played that thing up until like seven years ago. That's awesome. And, I, and that's what you do when you usually get a keyboard, you get like your entry level keyboard and you just play it until it's almost Dead, it it did die. It was it, the it end. Did die. It was like the keys physically stopped working. And then that's when you know it's time for an upgrade. It's time for a good thing I got a job here. Now yeah. There's just pianos everywhere. <laughs> now there's pianos everywhere. Uh, Lisa, you actually have a new video that just dropped today about a pretty popular band called yeah. The Beatles. You want to talk, tell us about uh, yeah, it? Yeah, I do actually. I'm really excited about this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our members have access to it now. Um, if you're joining us on YouTube, this will launch um, in the next little while. But if you got the seven day trial, you could just click our seven day trial link um, below this video and you can check it out. But basically, um, it's three Beatles songs that are perfect for beginners. Um, I love the Beatles and like the more I learn about them, the more I think about the impact they had on the piano in pop music. And so I wanted to make the songs really accessible to absolutely everybody. So I picked three. One of them will be no surprise. The second one you'll be like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But the third one's a wild card. You're gonna be like, Ooh, what is this? I'm not gonna wow. tell you what they are. Or well, maybe, it oh, <laughs> nice Kevin. Um, do we have a clip? Yeah, we do have a clip. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, Let's share it. it. I'm so excited because in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you three Beatles songs that are perfect for beginners. Now the piano has played a star role in many Beatles songs, and I might even dare to say that the Beatles made the piano a pop star. So in this video, I will be walking you through how to play Let It Be, Hey Jude, and Obla oh D. All three of these songs are super fun and super attainable for brand new piano players. So let's dive in. The first song we're gonna learn is Let It Be. Now this one was written by Paul McCartney around the time the Beatles were breaking up. Now Paul's mom had passed away and she came to him in a dream and told him to let it be. So this song is extremely profound, very, very beautiful, and I'm gonna teach it to you now. Okay, so we're gonna take our right hand and we're gonna place our thumb on C, our third finger on E, and our five finger on G, and this gives us a C chord. Now if this is a difficult shape for you to play, just get rid of the middle note and you can play the outer two. That totally works. So we're gonna do this on C twice. Then we're gonna move down to G and keep that same shape. So we've got G, B, and D, and we'll do that twice. Everybody steps up. We've got A, C, and E. This is an A minor chord two times. And then down to F. Here's F, everybody moves two times. Repeat, C, you're gonna play G, and then you're gonna move down to F, We can try adding in our left hand. So just match the chord names with your left hand. So if it says C, I'm gonna play C. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Back to C. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be F and C. So we'll keep going. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be F and C. Now for the chorus, we're gonna move down to A minor. We've already played this chord, so our hands know what to do. A minor, down to G, then F and C. C. Our hands know what to do. Our hands know what to do. Okay, what I like about this is though, like first we learn it really simple, but then I add some of the extra stuff in as we go so that you can sound a little bit more like the record. Um, but yeah. So something for every level. Yeah, I'm gonna sneeze, you should talk for a minute. Okay, hello, my name is Kevin Castro and mm -hmm. welcome to the Piano Bench again, if you're just joining us. <laughs> the sneeze is going away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's happening to me? My falling apart. Okay. okay, Lisa, so what are we doing today? Nobody what is, knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows. What are our friends going to learn from okay. us? Because we are here to learn. Fine. Here's the thing. To get better at something, you have to practice. 
I've been working on a hack for this for years. A hack? <laughs> Trying to find a way to not just, practice? Just like not have to practice and just be awesome. <laughs> Haven't discovered it yet. Right. <laughs> but um, while we wait for that to work itself out, we'll just keep teaching you exercises to make you more awesome at the piano. So Kevin created these awesome exercises, which I'm going to teach you. <laughs> And hope that I can play. No, just joking. I can. These are four exercises that are perfect for beginners. And there's a method to the madness here. So the exercises, we're going to go through them together. Um, do we have a download in the members we area? We do have a download in the members area. So if you want to follow along with this and you're on the piano website, just click that red arrow underneath. Yes. And you can download the PDF to practice along with this. Now, the whole... My thinking, anyways, is that your exercises should be as musical as humanly possible. So our first exercise, I'm just going to show you. Can I turn this a little louder? The piano? Okay. There we go. What is happening? Isn't it pretty? Doesn't this sound familiar, friends? It's a chord progression. It is. And you're using inversions to play those chords. So it's like you're sneaking your technique practice into an exercise and you're chording. And you sound amazing because you're playing something that's really cinematic. So the shapes that we'll use for this exercise, root position E minor chords. So you've got E, G, and B. And then what you need to do is you need to move your third finger so that your five finger can go here and your second finger can go here. So just to see the movement here and then here. And then to get to our G chord, which will be placed in second inversion, I just like visually target the G. So my third finger is gonna come back there and then I'm gonna float my one and my five to this shape. And then for the D chord, the D stays under the thumb and you come back to root position. So it's a really like, it seems like, ah, what are your hands doing? But the movement feels super organic and lovely as you move through it. So here to here, to here, and then here. And the left hand mirrors this, so here's how it's gonna sound when we play it separately. We're repeating each pattern, and then we're gonna move to C twice. And then we move down to G, so this is definitely a movement for the hands. up to the E. And getting ready for C. And you can kind of lean into the higher note, like notice how I'm like quiet and then loud. So you have to kind of think about dynamics a little bit as you go through something like this. And that is called parallel motion. Parallel motion is when you're playing in the same direction with yes. both hands. So one thing that's a little bit tricky with parallel motion is you'll notice even though you're playing the same notes with both hands, it's different fingers on each of the hands. So that's something to just watch out for. So the reason this exercise is so good, not only the chords, but you you are focusing on different things between the hands. So your brain's like, ah, what, <laughs> what are we doing and how does this work? So even if you weren't playing along with me right there, I would really encourage you to use this exercise just as part of your routine and you can apply this pattern to any chord progression that you want. It's just playing the chord broken. Hands are following each other here. See, five, three, one, and then five, one, two, five. Whoa. And then here, my left hand's playing the two finger, and my right hand's playing a three finger, and then they feel the same again. So it's just like, it's a bit of a mind bend. It is. Yeah. And the next one is, the, I mean, this next exercise you're about to learn is probably the most epic sounding <gasps> beginner piano exercise you Ever. can learn. And the only reason is I changed one chord at the very end. Lisa, can you just give us a demo of what it sounds because like? Because God before forbid we Kevin should follow. Just joking. <laughs> this is why we love him. So the pattern is starting on the top now. Okay, here's the surprise. Can anybody guess? Oh. Ooh, that's the chord. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Why did you pick that chord? Oh, that chord, I picked it because the chord, it's the same progression that we were using before, but yeah. I changed the last chord and I changed it on purpose. The thing is, this last chord is a B major chord. It doesn't belong here. It doesn't belong in the key of E minor because there's a D sharp in there. 
Um, but the thing is, if I make it a major chord, B major, that is the five oh, going go. to the one. So B is the fifth of oh, E. Oh, Annette guessed se secondary dominant. It's Somebody's second... been coming to your classes, Kevin. Annette. Somebody's Beautiful. paying attention. Someone is paying attention in theory class and it's paying off. That is a secondary dominant, a 5-1, which just sounds so epic when you can use it, especially when you're resolving on a minor chord. So, Lisa, can you now play oh, that, yes. but using contrary motion? So now, if you look Ugh. really closely, <laughs> Lisa's right hand is gonna be going down while her left hand goes up. This is a fun so, little test. Listen. So my right watch. hand is doing this motion. So top, middle, bottom. Okay, and my left hand <laughs> is doing the opposite. So they're opposites. Ah. C, G, <laughs> B. Mm -hmm. That's it's so pretty. Sauce. So actually, the thing about contrary motion I find is as soon as you turn your brain off, it's easier. Yeah, if you, you can definitely overthink this, but just oh, yes. try to let your fingers just, you know what it's supposed to sound like. And the feel is really natural because it's like outside, middle, but like it, exactly. it works. Yeah, the fingering, it's not as wildly different as parallel motion is because they're doing similar type of fingering. Mm -hmm. Outside, middle, inside, that's a good way to look at it. Yes. Uh, I really enjoy the contrary motion. Me too. Exercises. So far, which one do you like more, the parallel motion mm -hmm. or the contrary motion? Well, Let I'm going to pick the contrary no. motion because you threw that well, I mean, you secondary could, so, dominant. I mean, in. well, let's try this. What if you use that B chord in the parallel? Oh. What would that sound like? Oh, Just okay. as a little experiment. Way fancier. It's, yeah, it sounds it, like you really are playing extra notes. I, it does, but it, it's just that one little Ooh. trick. Contrary motion. Remember those words. Well. So that is exercise number one. And the thing is, you don't have to be just a beginner no. to be practicing those two things. You can be at any level and try it with any chord progression. Or different articulations between the hands, or different tempos, or anything. The main idea is practicing parallel motion yes. and also practicing contrary motion. Yes. This is just an exercise that we are giving you that you can implement into your practice routine and see if uh, you can even write a song with that. That sounded like a song already. It sounded like a great song. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do the next exercise, All which right. I'm a little bit afraid of. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie one. to you. Guess what Kevin has titled this one? <laughs> <clears throat> Rhythmic syncopation. Rhythmic syncopation. So this one is for all you Rhythmic drummers out there. I know there's no drummers watch or maybe there is drummers there watching this. Be. There might be some drummers like us I know and the piano is actually a percussion instrument believe it or not. I know crazy, right? It's actually considered a percussive instrument. Okay, so in order to do this We're gonna really work on our rhythm. Mm -hmm. So first one mm -hmm. is more so our technique our contrary motion our parallel motion But now we're working on our rhythm between our right hand and our left hand and kind of doing that like What's that uh, thing you do? Can you uh, do it? Uh, or you like tap your head and like rub your, is that what you're supposed to I do? I can do it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> is that what you're supposed to I do? I don't know. It just made me yawn. So it was <laughs> stressful. I don't know. Your brain's like, okay, okay. So that's the kind of idea with this next exercise. So Lisa, Ugh. break it down for us. What are we doing? So the great news is we are just playing fifths on C. So hands are here. Yeah, it's just about the rhythm. Okay. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to play together, right, left, right, Together. Let's do that again without talking. <laughs> So right now, your right hand was doing just quarter notes. So if you just play your right wah, hand for a second. Wah, wah, see if you wah. Can just, just right hand, just keep the quarter notes for a second. So if you're trying this at home. Some say love. It's, yeah, it's the rose. Yeah, just do that. So now your left hand, keep doing that for a second. Okay. Your left hand's gonna go one and two and three and four. One and two and three you and four. You have to really like mentally disconnect from your Oh, I did it wrong already. One, <laughs> One and, and two, two and three and four. four. Do not attempt to do this exercise while talking, <laughs> friends. It doesn't so it's work. On beat one, 
the and of two. So that's where that syncopation comes in, and then together on beat four. So if you just do the left hand rhythm, one and two and three and four. Don't one, follow me. <laughs> Don't follow time. me. One and two and three and four. One and two and what? That was it. You had one it. One and two and three and four. Oh, oh, Wait, there's oh. an extra clap. What is happening? I think you're just adding extra beats. Well, in there, I no? wanted a new beat. One and one two. One and two and three. three. Oh, you and hold for four. the. Yeah. You got it. There's a tie I know. in there. What I'm doing. Okay, so try it one more time. Sure. Right hand versus left hand. One and two and three and four. I can play it fine. So what happens if you change, add, add a C major chord now to that? And then maybe G and then F afterwards if you can. I just played a sus chord. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You're you playing music. Now you're playing the rose. Oh. Some With say love, it is a Oops, I got distracted. <laughs> Two and three, four. <laughs> I had to move. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it totally works. It works. It sounds really good. So that's with the left hand being a little bit syncopated. So what happens if you swap that? What? So now the next line in this exercise is that your left hand is doing the quarter notes, but now your right hand <gasps> is trying with that same exact rhythm. So mentally and emotionally, <laughs> I'm just gonna settle in to a steady beat with my left hand. And I'm gonna put this puppy on autopilot, so whatever happens, this just has to keep on going. Exactly. Then I'm gonna focus on my right hand, so one and two and three and four. And look, I'm doing it, one and two and this is not so bad. It's actually kind of relaxing. And I guess the trick would be uh, <laughs> changing between the hands. Did you see I just did that, Kevin? Nice. Yeah, 10 extra oh. points for me. You did it. <sighs> yeah. So what is the point of doing, of working on our rhythm? Um, well, I feel like People, especially when you're playing with other instruments, can get a little bit cranky with you if you're not playing rhythm appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It makes it a better time for everybody because the rhythm provides like the context for everything else that can happen. So when you can develop a strong sense of rhythm, then you can play with others. And also the music you create will make more sense. It's also really, really good. Something like this forces you to think differently about what each of your hands is doing. So I'm pretty sure there's like like higher level brain benefits to that. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, rhythm Rhythm is one thing too that most piano players struggle with because at the beginning when you're learning music, everyone just cares about the chords, about the notes. Yes. But honestly, without rhythm, you're not gonna be able to make music. And that is one area of just music in general, music education that gets really overlooked. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, things like Drumeo, uh, like Jeff was saying in the chat here that like he's like Drumio helps a ton, and even doing like some courses like a thirty day drummer or stuff like that, yeah. just gaining some kind of limb independence for your rhythm, so you can do that left brain right brain type thing when you're yeah. playing piano. Another example is like in like the Charlie Brown song Linus and Lucy, like oh, the da -da -da -da, like your yeah. hands are doing different things. Um, a uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's a really neat challenge. Are you gonna tell me to do something and then you're? And you know what? Uh, uh, do you know what? A, do you know what a polyrhythm is, Lisa? This is right here. Oh no. No. Wait. Wait what? <laughs> a polyrhythm. I know this one. Help me. Do you know what it is? Yeah, with his clapping. Okay, a polyrhythm is when you're doing two beats at the same time, two different rhythms at the same time. So there's a four over three polyrhythm. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can do this for a sec. I'll try to do it on the piano after. It might look weird because you can't even see my lap right here. Um, but so you can you can follow me. So okay. Uh, so your right hand, go like this. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, they can see if one, they do this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Right? You got it. Yeah. Now your left hand's gonna come in on four, four. Ready? One. Uh, here we go. One, two, three, four, one. This isn't working. Two, my hands three, are doing the same four, thing. One, it's two, broken. Three, four, one. But if I my right hand, one, two, three. Uh, oh my gosh, that is so. One, two. Uh, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. This is something that I work on too. But polyrhythm is when you're doing two different rhythms at the same time. And I can maybe do it, but then I don't think I can speak while I can do it. Yeah. Right, let me see if I can do it with these two C notes. Uh, so my right hand. 
is going one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, or maybe it's one, two, three, four, one, two, Why would three, anybody four, do this? One, two, yeah, that's what it is. I, I got it now, I got it now. Ready? Here we go. So, right hand. <laughs> Ready? So, my right hand is doing four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, and my left hand is one, two, three, one, two, three. So that is a called that is called a polyrhythm when you're doing the two different rhythms at the same time. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> Hold on. Why would we want to do that though? That is amazing for rhythm independence of both hands so that if you can do a polyrhythm there's really like no rhythms that are going to challenge you after that. That's like one of the hardest types of rhythms but why? to play. But wh but why would a piano player want to do that? Oh, there. I mean, who who is that guy you you uh, from Dream Theater? What am I blanking on? His Jordan name? Rudis. Jordan Rudis, king of polyrhythms, king of everything, crazy on the piano, and it's <sighs> it's a really great skill if you want to try and challenge yourself. Even just googling polyrhythm, trying to play polyrhythms. I did a horrible example of one just now, but I really enjoyed it, Kevin. <laughs> but the idea is, your right hand is doing four four. So one more time. Here it is. Oh no. One two three four. One two three. And left hand. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Truman, you got it? How you doing with this one, Truman? I think it, I got I it. Talk while I'm doing it. <laughs> you got it. You just don't even think about it. Just think about the rhythm. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 da. Ba, da, 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 And together. One, two, three. Left hand. One, two, three. One, two, three. And right hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Did this change it? No. Ooh, ooh. That's hard though. But anyways, that's that's a well, bonus. We've just we've just gone somewhere else. <laughs> we have just gone somewhere else. It definitely else. bends your mind, but once you've got the groove, it's easier. It's fine it once Jeff. you hear it though. Yeah. Like it's not I can't that, feel that, learn it, I have to hear learn it. Yeah. <laughs> I know that what you was mean. a sentence that makes I think sense. we should make like a what is Lisa quote with that. Lisa play <laughs> It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. Yeah, you're right, Patsy. <sighs> All right. Lisa, That's where good. were we? We're I don't even know. Oh, I know. We're, I'm just gone okay, so now. So that is exercise number two. So number one, let's recap. Parallel motion, I like contrary I need a motion. Snack. Yeah, you need a break after that. <laughs> if you're watching the replay, just pause it here, go get a snack, and come back for exercise number three. Okay. Number two was the rhythmic one. That is where we're doing with, dealing with rhythmic syncopation. <sighs> exercise numero tres. Thank you. This one's a little <laughs> bit more. This is uh, a this lot is more relaxing. Help you after after what you've just endured. After just the polyrhythm, Thank now we're going to relax. <laughs> so what is the benefit of this exercise, Kevin? The spa arpeggio fits with almost any song. At least any song that's in 4-4. Four, four. It's also, for me, I think it's really beneficial to practice this thumb tuck. Like this movement, this like nimbleness of the fingers. So this five, one, that's not one, that's two. <laughs> five, two, one, up and over. And that cross two, over. Two, one, two, one, two. I just really like it. And you can play it slow or fast. It's very relaxing. And you can like improvise on your chords or scale. And that also, in its own way, kind of like works on um, different rhythms between the hands. I don't know. It's just a really great, fun exercise. You can try it on any chord progression with any chord. So like, if you took, again, the rose and did the spa arpeggio, what would that, could you make that work? C, G, and F? I think if you took an octave higher, it would it would be perfect. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yes, it works. You are a piano genius, Lisa. It makes Listen even even Lisa sounds like a piano genius. And like then the your left hand arpeggio. is like doing all that, you know, fancy. It sounds so fancy. It sounds so fancy. And once you get that thumb tuck, you can do it starting on pretty much any key. And it just sounds so nice to accompany yourself with that spot arpeggio. If you're gonna learn one arpeggio Best and learn it well. One. That's the one to learn. Spa arpeggio or bust. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Okay, Lisa. That was a nice one. That was nice. Now. Oh. 
Wow, goodness. What is this? <laughs> the last one. And this is, this one, it's, it's meant for pianists of every level. It doesn't matter if it's your first day learning piano or you are the you're most last. experienced. Or you're the last. <laughs> <laughs> or the most experienced piano player in the world. This is an exercise that can benefit you, and it's something called Hannon. Now, Hannon is, uh, we've talked about it here before. You're really selling this, Kevin. Honestly, it's a super exercise because it's not focusing on like the black notes or like, it's not like scale work. It's focusing on your actual hand and working on the strength between your pinky and ring finger. It's working on the flexibility of the wrist, your speed, your control, how accurate you can play the notes. It's like this one super exercise. And I know sometimes people look at the sheet music and it's really intimidating to look at. So Lisa is gonna show us the pattern because it's all about patterns. It's all about the patterns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really struggling with being like back in life today. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Okay, Lisa, can you show us, just, okay. just hand separately, how do you play Hannon? All right, friends, here is how you play Hannon. Right hand, thumb on C, skip the next note. So the most important part of this exercise is, is this distance. So you skip the middle, and then every other finger is gonna naturally line up exactly where it's supposed to. And then look what happens when I come up to my five finger and my thumb resets itself here on the D. So C, and then D, and then you repeat that pattern. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two. And then you can just keep on going and going. The left hand, same thing, but you start with your five and your four does the skip, and then you just walk up and down. Now, some things to keep in mind. Look at what happens to my pinky finger and my left hand when I play this, wait for it. <laughs> there, it flies up. I'll do it again. Ah, that's tension. So just try to relax as best you can, but don't freak out if your finger's doing that. Like some people will write in just be like, oh my gosh, my fingers are flying. Yeah, it's okay. Just Especially when you're doing it with the left hand, because on the way up, you're creating that distance between your pinky yeah. and your ring finger, which you're not used to doing. So it means it's, it's a, working. It means it's working. If you're struggling a little bit or doesn't yeah. feel super smooth, it's kind of like your fingers are doing like individual like, you know, curls. It's like a workout, but for your fingers. The other thing to keep in mind is it doesn't, this is not, that's not it. You can't just like go crazy and not have any sense of rhythm while you're doing a Hannon. In fact, it's probably ideal for you to practice this with a metronome. And slow. Slow. First. You have to make every single note count. So for somebody like me who may not be, you know, the, the best at focusing on one task, I have to think about what I can think about. So what I mean by that is, how do the keys feel under my fingers? What are my shoulders doing? Am I breathing? Am I smiling? Oops. Maybe one hand goes staccato for a second. And then maybe I switch it up. And I just work back and forth that way. Just finding different ways to make it <laughs> engaging so I am focusing on what I'm doing. Exactly. Yeah, Michelle says, I have the Hannon book, but I've been scared to even open it. And that's the thing. Yeah. They all look really scary, but uh, when you break it down, it's all about patterns. It's just a pattern. It's, if you can read the first measure and just take it one note at a time. That's all you gotta do. Hand separately too, and then you figure out what the pattern is, and then it just repeats and repeats and repeats. Yeah. Um, and so this is just Hannon number one. There are 60 Hannons. Shh. 60. But the idea is, if you can play all 60 exercises of Hannon, there will never be another song that will technically challenge you on the piano again. And that's a big promise coming from the composer, Hannon, himself. Um, but I haven't completed all 60, so I cannot confirm nor deny mm. these claims. If yeah. you have, let me know in the comments. I would love to meet you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I've, I've gotten about halfway through the book, because it's a hard book. Um, some of the exercises are harder than others, but the, at least if you do the first 10, your pinky and ring finger strength will go off the charts. They'll be so strong. They'll be so much stronger, and it's gonna really come out in your playing when you're you know, doing fast runs or anything. Um, so a huge, huge benefit to learn Hannon and add that in your practice routine. So Lisa, can we do one, one quick rundown of all four of these exercises, just playing them once through. You can spend more time with these exercises, but just go exercise one, Two, three, and four. You want me to concentrate for, for three pages? Concentrate for three pages. Ready? So if you're watching this on a replay or you want to come back and watch this again, make sure you practice along with Lisa. So Lisa, don't worry about going too fast. Walk us through it. 
here it is. Here's our E minor. Parallel motion. Getting ready for C. Thinking about G. Left hand uses the two finger. And relaxing on D. Two, contrary motion. Right hand's gonna start up high, left hand's gonna start on the bottom. with <laughs> the syncopation in the left. Actually, right that, now. those are the four exercises that if you're a beginner piano player, take those and you can spend a little bit more time with it. Take it hands separately if you need to at mm. first, nice and slow, and then put them hands together. Uh, and even if you are a little bit more experienced than this, you can modify them and make them your own. Remember to work on contrary motion, parallel motion, some kind of rhythmic syncopation in there, some sort of arpeggio practice, and at the end, some kind of new Hannon. I think I got it. Oh, you got to prove my dad is in the YouTube chat. Hello to Carlos Castro watching on YouTube. I'm really glad because I feel like those little piano emojis are for me. <laughs> I feel like that's a personal good job, Lisa. Yeah, that is. That's my piano teacher in the chat. So I got to make sure I'm not messing up and saying the wrong thing. Yeah, if you've heard Kevin's dad play, you, you'll be like, wow, that's high praise. Yeah. <laughs> He's unbelievable. <sighs> oh, okay. Man. So All right. there it is. Let's go and answer some questions. Questions? I think it is time for, oh, actually, before we do our questions, I always forget this, but I can't forget this time. We have a student of the week. Hold on, I think dance. I remember this do one. Do you remember the chord? No, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at it every time. Okay, our student of, this, of our week this week, look at that, is Rupert Spencer. We're gonna listen to Rupert Spencer jam out on the blues in G minor. Yay!
Man, uh, I love that. And like towards like the end of that, like if you go, it's in the 40 piece challenge uh, form thread in piano and he's going like, like, like it's just crazy soloing with the guitar and it sounds like he's tapping on the guitar, but. I love it. Way to go Rupert, you are the student of the week. Congratulations. Oh, no. Shredding, yes, absolutely shredding Rupert. <laughs> Okay, we have some questions, friends, that we are gonna have to um, lightning round. Yes, oh, we got lots of questions. Scoot Bradford, suggested practice time daily or otherwise for beginners. 20 minutes is fine to start working your way up to 30, yeah. 40, 30. Yeah, it's it's different and you know, you can gradually increase your speed or your, your time practicing um, the, the more that you practice and the longer you've been playing piano. When I was first starting, I was maybe 15 minutes of solid, consistent practice was great for me. Now it's like an hour of solid consistent practice is great for me, but it's different for wherever you're at. But at the beginning, yeah, 15 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. Um, Rook Marl, is the PSR E373 a good keyboard? Probably. Yes, uh, that is that is uh, Yamaha's beginner entry level keyboard, um, probably like around like the $300 price range. Um, it's, it's good. It's a good solid keyboard, like it's got like semi-weighted keys, but uh, I would personally, I, I like the Roll and Go a little bit more in that similar price range. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not a bad keyboard by any means. It's just there are, if you spend like a little bit more money, like another hundred, you'll get a quite a bit better of a keyboard. You'll get more of yeah. a, like a solid playing experience. <laughs> and like you can check out the review that Lisa and Truman did on the best beginner keyboard 2023 because they do talk about the Roll and Go in there if you want to check it out. Wake me up. For you go, I always think of that song when I hear it. Okay. <laughs> so Farmer Andy, I'm trying to sight read better as defined playing a piece with some fluidity on foreseeing it. Good luck. From the <laughs> methods course, it sounds like recognizing intervals are key. Yes. Question, how do you recognize intervals in the left hand of Chopin's Nocturne Opus 9 number 2? Here's the thing, my friend. <clears throat> I think that the percentage of people who can sight read a piece by Chopin, especially that piece, fluidly, <laughs> is like 0.1%. So when I learn that song, I have to read the notes so slowly, play them so slowly, and then memorize them as I go. Now, there are some like identifiable chord names, but he voices them. This is the thing with Chopin is he voices his chords a little bit differently almost every single time he rotates through them. So you're going to play it one way, and then you're going to play it slightly different, and then you're going to go back, and then again, it's slightly different. Now, oh, now it's down an octave. So you can figure out what the chords are called and write the chord names above the measures. That will help. I also tend to think about, um, this is not, actually, hold on. I wonder, do we have that piece in our song library? Let me just see. It was Chopin's Nocturne Op 9, number two. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, unless you're a Here. concert <clears throat> level pianist. Oh, you have it. Yeah, we have it. Look at this, guys. Can they see the screen? Let's yeah. see if we can get it up. Okay. Oh, look at that. So we have it in our song library. So for example, let's just, Lisa, can you use this? Yes, you can. Let's loop this. Okay, I'm actually gonna focus it on the second part. So now it's just gonna show the left hand and I'm gonna focus on that. Okay. So, so right now we're using the songs feature on piano. So if you look here, um, you're gonna see, the, you can kind of figure out that these are chords. So here we have, oh geez, we've got a G and then a C and then an E flat. So that's kind of an easy, so if you play that on the piano, G and E flat. Yeah, so if you like look at Kevin's hand now for a second, we're gonna do a little bit of back and forth. Um, there, and play it with your five and two. Five and two. Yeah. So that's a shape and a distance, that, there you go, you wanna memorize. And then it inverts and it includes the B flat on top. And then it, it does what now? It goes to a B flat, C, and E flat. B flat, or, C. Sorry, B flat, E flat, G. <laughs> yeah. There you go, yeah. So it's like G and E flat, then. And if you play it like this, you can have, yeah. Oh, I see. There's a method to my madness. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So. So I relate the way that the notes look <laughs> to how my hands feel, and then there's like this like synapsis that happens, <laughs> and eventually it sticks. But if we go, to, let's come back to the screen. If we go to the next measure, the chords are changing. Kevin, what's the name of this chord? Oh, you know what? Look at this. <laughs> this is awesome. The piano will play it for us. 
Ho ho ho. Now we can slow down. Oops. There we go. So if you are stuck, you can use that to help you along. But now I look at the interval clusters. So you can see on, I can't draw on this, but you can see in this second little segment where we've got this crazy chord here, um, we've got a C and a D flat. Yeah? We got C flat. Oh, that's a C flat. D Thank and you, Kevin. A flat. This is why Lisa should not be in charge of reading notes. I have to play it to know I'm doing it right. So you look at the two that are closer together. I wish I could circle on this. Um, and then you look at the two are, that are far apart and you kind of like interval your way through that. <laughs> and it's just a sense of harmony. It's just, it's going from like a B fully diminished chord over E flat. And then goes back to E flat major. It's such a hard song to play. Oh. Kevin improvises through it. Irritating sorry, beautiful. sorry. That's a that's kind of like Eddie Duchin's cover of that song. It's like a jazz rendition. Of course. Of that, and it's so beautiful. Of course. Look it up if you haven't heard of him. Uh, there you go, some homework. So use the practice <laughs> tool, loop it, isolate that left hand, and then just know that this is a beast, and I don't foresee anybody smoothly reading through this unless you're a very advanced sight reader. No, this is stuff that I'm working on. This is what I'm currently working on. And sight reading is one of my weaknesses, for sure. I'm more of a... Look at the look at the lead sheet. Let my and ears do the work. Let my ears do the work, and then I'll, my fingers will figure out the rest. But I want to get better at just looking at this stuff. And and so when you're looking at intervals and and whatnot, it is a little bit tricky at first, but it does get easier the more you practice. We will do Fields of Gold, Ryan, at the end of this for you. Um, H Zeis, uh, what do you think about stickers to identify the keys? We always suggest you avoid them if you can, because you'll be learning the geography of the keyboard more efficiently if you're not using them. Use the groupings of two and three to help you navigate the keyboard. So you can see at the base of the two black keys, you have C, the base of the three black keys, you have F, and that will help. 88, Sinclair de Lune on the bottom of page two, measure 27 of the original full version in D flat, the left hand arpeggios, what is the fingering recommended? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> I'm going to be fully honest with you. At this point, I think it's just whatever you can get through. That would be a great question for Cassie if you have ever attended her Technique Tuesday. You can send her um, this via email, cassie at pianote.com, or send it to Technique Tuesday. She's our resident classical expert, and she may have some fingering suggestions for you on that one. Um, Alan, with the new songs added, most have two treble clef lines and a bass clef line. If you don't or can't sing the melody, how do you play the song as a standalone? That's a really, really great question. We had a request for Fields of Gold, so we're going to show you right now. You have to kind of allow yourself to be a bit creative, but you can customize your experience. I'm pressing play. I'm clicking synth at the bottom of my music here. And then these three dots in the corner uh, bring up the settings. So what you can do is you can actually hide under instruments. You can hit this little, like in the middle, there's like an eye icon. See how it takes away, there it's back. There's the right hand part and now it's gone. So now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the melody shown and you're gonna see the left hand, like the bass line. So if I were to give this, well, we can just let it play here. This is what it would sound like. But you can, this is where you get to be a bit creative. Hold on. Oh, I have to mute it too. One second. There we go. I just clicked, sorry. I muted the wrong thing, friends. Sorry. <laughs> That's what it will sound like when you're playing it. Okay, but now I'm gonna hand this to Kevin. And instead of playing that bass line exactly as it's written. So so the thing is, the way it's written out when you're reading like the treble clef and the bass clef, it's typically the the music that the piano player would, would be playing mm -hmm. in the actual track. So yes. the original piano score. Yes. Now, when I like to play music, I like to take the melody and I like to take the chords on top 
and then I will add my own harmony based on the chords that are being played. We have three minutes. We have okay, one minute. Okay, really quick. So I didn't you realize know what? what time it was. You know what? I'm gonna, do we really? Oh, okay, you know what? I'm actually doing an in theory on this. I've gotten so many requests for this exact topic. Next month, how to play solo piano, or we might do it on the bench. We're gonna, we're gonna focus on this for a whole session. So we will get back to you, but I like to read it as a lead sheet. Yes. <sighs> So you, okay. you can play the melody as it's notated and improvise left yeah. hand. Do you want to take it up? Yeah. Mm. Let's go. seven day trial so you can go explore our song library a little bit and I hope you have an awesome day. Whoa that was wild Kevin. I know.